LeBron James significant ankle injury and it was gnar. If you didn't see it, I wouldn't go out searching for it because it is a nasty looking injury. Turns out it's a high ankle sprain, which if you don't know what a high ankle sprain is, uh, Dr. Monty is here to save you. Uh, the two bones in your lower legs are pulled apart. And essentially, it's as close to breaking your leg as you can get without breaking it. This is a code 10 abort. Yeah, and this is a Kyrie, <laughs> out, yeah, this is a Kyrie in, or Irving injury. He's had this multiple times. And what they do to heal it is they drill a hole between your two bones, and they put a wire in there, and they tighten that wire to make the bones come back together more dude, quickly. no, nah, no. Nah, oh. oh, that's I'm out, gross, man. dude. I'm out, man. Um... And the question, obviously, without Anthony Davis and without LeBron James, I don't think there's any question the Lakers got to go and make a move, Jake. Yeah. But how big do they go and what are you willing to give up? If you're the Lakers, should you be looking to trade Kyle Kuzma? Yeah, look, I think uh, I think if I'm the Lakers right now and I'm Rob Polinka, I'm, I'm pretty open to a lot of different trades. You know, I think that um, as much as I love Montrez Harrell, I think that that's going to be a guy that, that teams are looking at. You know, if, if I'm a team that the Lakers are calling, and I'm looking at the Lakers roster, I'm looking at Kyle Kuzma, I'm looking at Montrez Harrell, uh, I'm looking at uh, Cantavius Caldwell-Pope, I'm looking at those three guys as potential guys that, that I would want, uh, you know, to, to move. And so, you know, if I'm the Lakers, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for uh, a wing score, somebody who can fill it up, because what's going to happen here is I think AD is going to be out pretty much the rest of the season. He may come back if they somehow made the postseason, which I think is in serious doubt right now if they were to do nothing. But let's just say that they did go and get Bradley Beal, and then LeBron comes back in a couple of weeks. Okay, now we got something we're working with, you know? I mean, yes, you're going to be limited in terms of big men, but it, you can't seriously tell me that that people would doubt LeBron James's ability to get it done if he had Bradley Beal, if he had yep. um, the shooting that they have on the rest of the roster. Like I think you can. My point just is, is I think you can work with that. You know, you need to make a move that, that is flexible in terms of your roster and on the floor. It can't be somebody who who is pigeonholed into one role. Well, and I also think this opens up the the NBA significantly, especially in the West. I think the Lakers, I think you're right. I agree with you. If the Lakers don't make a deal, I think they're going to be treading water to make the postseason without LeBron and AD, which, by the way, I think you totally understand that. Those are two of the best players in the NBA. Yeah. But that doesn't mean you have to settle there. Mm -hmm. Because if you make the postseason, you're likely going to have one or both of those guys back. LeBron is obviously closer to returning than AD. Um, so I think that's a that's a significant situation for the Lakers to be in. But I think the other question is, who's your biggest competition now? Because obviously the elephant in the room is the Utah Jazz. This is a team that was, for most of this season, clearly the best team in the NBA. And then they just, for the last two, three weeks, have fallen on incredibly, incredibly hard times. And I think a lot of that has been Bojan Bogdanovich just not shooting well at all and being a turnstile on defense, which is, I think, really turned up the microscope on guys like Rudy Gobert because wings are now getting into the, the lane repeatedly. I mean, I think we saw it against Washington. The thing that really stands out to me is Bradley Beal just attacking. Westbrook just attacking Gobert, attacking the rim. Um, and it's it makes life very difficult for Rudy Gobert, frankly, and it makes life very difficult for the Jazz. Mm -hmm. And my question is, is if the Lakers go and make a trade and the, the Jazz get back to playing elite, I still think the Jazz are the best team in the Western Conference, and it doesn't matter what the Lakers do. If the Lakers are 100% healthy and the Jazz play their best basketball, I think the Lakers are still the better team in a seven-game series. Yeah, I, I think that the Jazz are in this position where they, they need to figure out what exactly they're going to do here because teams have figured out how to play yes. them. Uh, I think, to you, and this is a point that you brought up last week and just now, which is the whole idea of teams are not scared to attack Rudy Gobert anymore um, in the sense of, uh, hey, I'm going to drive the paint and I'm going to create body contact to try to get the and one. You know, they understand that, okay, if we can get him in foul trouble, Quinn's already taken him out about six minutes into the game, but if yeah. we can get him in early foul trouble, maybe he doesn't come back till eight or seven minutes left in the second quarter. And if that's a thing, then that opens up the paint for us and gets us a lot better of a look. But I think let's just assume that Rudy doesn't get in foul trouble and he's able to stay in the game. The issue still remains, and this is going to be one of the, the hardest things for the Jazz to overcome. Uh, teams are getting really high percentage looks against the Jazz, whether it's 
trying to get the and one, whether it's playing pick and roll and getting the elbow jumper consistently, like teams are getting really high percentage looks and the Jazz are shooting the three, which is not a high percentage look by anybody's standard. The best teams are making four out of 10 threes. Like that's not a lot of, uh, that's not a high percentage. And so I'm just, every time I watch the Jazz, I'm sitting here thinking, okay, we're going to get off to a slow start in this game. Then we're going to have to work our ass off through the middle quarters. And then we're going to have to close it at the end of the game. That's been their game plan. And that's not going to work against the, the upper echelon teams in the league. And I think they got to figure that out. Yeah, and I don't, I don't know how you go about figuring that out. I, I really don't. And, and I think right now, I can make the argument that the Phoenix Suns are the best team in the Western Conference. Mm-hmm. The way they're playing, the way Devin Booker's attacking the rim, and the way that they are defending... And I think the key guy on defense now has clearly become Mikhail Bridges. The way that he is he is able to, I'm not going to say he can lock down your best player, but Mikhail Bridges makes people's lives very difficult because his arms are as long as your legs are. And so it's very difficult to shoot over him. Um, it's very difficult to gap him um, on a step back. Like uh, Mikhail Bridges plays a very high level of defense, and I think that has made a world of difference for the Suns being able to rely on him. Um, I think he has been able to cover for some of DeAndre Ayton's shortfalls. And I think his corner three is almost automatic at this point. So what you're seeing is that the Suns have stepped their game way up. I think you're seeing that, you know, obviously Devin Booker is becoming much more of a lethal scorer now, scoring with purpose instead of just scoring with abandon. Mm -hmm. And I think that's taken the Suns to a different level. Again, when the Lakers are healthy, I don't think they're on that level. I think if the LA Clippers go and make a deal, there's a lot of people who think the Clippers are very close to getting Lonzo Ball. If the Pelicans are willing to trade Lonzo Ball, I think that is a very significant pickup for the LA Clippers. Yeah. Because what they don't have is a distributor, and what they need is more guys that can consistently make that three. And I think Lonzo Ball is a guy that brings tremendous value to that team, and it allows them to play faster, smaller basketball. So I think you have to watch the Clippers. I think you have to watch the Lakers. By the way, my thought is it's high time to trade Kyle Kuzma. Like yeah. I love Kyle Kuzma; he's a really good player. He just is. He, I think he's <laughs> at his ceiling. Dude, the Suns broadcast last night was absolutely trashing Kyle Kuzma for his jump shot. They were talking about how his jump shot is essentially a line drive, you know, and that it basically has no chance to go in unless he threads it. And then and then they flip to a highlight of Devin Booker, and they're like, "Hey guys, so this is what a real jump shot looks like." <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, look, you're not wrong, but it's just you don't usually see broadcasts do that to players, you know? Oh, I think they love I – think, I think all teams love going after the Lakers. Um, and what I would say is, yeah, Kyle Kuzma um, is shooting a career best. I think it's like 37% from three this year. Mm-hmm. So it, it may be a line drive, but it's going in. And I, I think when you're Kuzma and you don't play at the rim a lot and you're shooting 44%, mm-hmm. you, your jump shot's just fine. My question is, what's the next step for Kuzma? And I don't think he makes that step with the Lakers because he's never going to be the number one or two option there. Yeah, he needs more minutes. That's what he needs. He needs to be yeah. in a situation where... It's not know, even he's... minutes to me. It's responsibility. Yeah. He needs a lot more responsibility. That's how you grow in this league. Yeah, you, He needs to believe that he's counted on to win games. He knows he's not in L.A. Yeah. He's just not. I also think there's nothing happening in the East. Mm -hmm. I I don't see anything in the East, frankly, that makes me think um, Milwaukee. Brooklyn, Brooklyn's very interesting to me. This Dinwiddie situation, you know, obviously he's out for the year with this torn ACL. If they are able to trade him, I think that that helps them a lot. Yeah. And I think it'll be interesting. Watch Watch what the Nets do in trade. Obviously, Blake to look great. Blake Griffin looked great yesterday. He clearly has his bounce back, which probably means he never lost it. Right. Um. He just stopped using it. Mm-hmm. But I mean that that two handed dunk he did yeah. was vintage. So if he's back to that guy and he's able to play a decent level of defense, which we saw yesterday, th- I mean they're they're going to win the NBA championship this year. Well, now I mean obviously Kevin Durant is retired and he's never going to yeah, play. Yeah, I don't. Again. Does does Kevin Durant even like play bad? Like does he show up to the arena anymore? Where's your guy like, at, man? Dude, I, I'm not sure if if Kevin Durant like is even a uh, uh, a Brooklyn Net anymore on any level. The guy the guy literally has been on injury for months at this point like i don't understand like to me what this is is nobody's talking about kevin durant and what it tells me is the injury was a lot worse than 
than anybody let on. Yeah. You know, I feel like it went from, oh, my hamstring is sore, to now the guy isn't playing for literally, like, how long has it been? Like, 90, 100 days years. since we've seen him, dude? Like, it's been years. a long time. It's been like seven years. Like, hasn't it been since... Do you remember that game? 1947? Uh, yeah, I think it was... Uh, yeah, it was 1947. I'll Andy stop. Sipowitz was on the floor with him, right? Okay, here we go. Uh, no, I think it was that the last time we saw Kevin Durant was when they had the COVID protocol issue where they took him out of the game. Yes. After they put him in the game, and like there were all those yeah, issues. Yeah, he has not returned since that night. And and I just... I, I don't know, dude. I, I have no idea what's happening with him. I, he strained his hamstring, um, and I, just, I don't know when... Kevin Durant's going to be back, but I'm telling you, they don't win without him. Yeah, they need him to win a championship. There's yeah. no question. I I think um, it, they're saying he's going to be out at least two more weeks with this hamstring injury. I mean, he. It, but here's the thing: they don't have to rush him back, though. What, I mean, well, who's yeah. pushing him? Nobody's Nobody. pushing him. Like what? Like why? Well, there's no. Nobody's pushing him back. The issue is he's coming off of a severe injury with the Achilles. And that usually means another significant injury is on the way. Yeah. That's what they ask it's Clay Thompson. usually happens, yep. You know, when you come off of a major injury in ACL, you know, usually that's that's a problem. Um, and I, I just look at some of the reports on Kevin Durant, and they are, they're talking about weeks. Um, he's not expected to return for another two weeks, uh, according to the New York Post. He's already been sidelined more than a month with a strained hamstring. Brooklyn doesn't want to take any chances. Um, and they are concerned, not, and I'm just yeah. reading this on the yeah, fly. Dude. They are concerned about straining the hamstring further, seeing as the long, arduous, ruptured Achilles rehab takes a toll on the body. It's a beating to, to rehab from that injury, man. Yes. And, 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 and this is why I say, I don't, I'd have to look at the Eastern conference standings to know how close it really is. But, but they're, when I look at them on the floor, like they're not being pushed by teams. I mean, they're able to just. They're able to just kind of turn it on and turn it off whenever they they good and well feel like it. And and yeah. as much as I'm not a big Kyrie guy, um, right now he's kind of what's what's pushing them. You know, Carden's playing well. He's distributing, doing everything you'd expect him to do. But Kyrie's the one hitting all these daggers, and so I think they're fine. But I think in the playoffs and in the NBA Finals, you're going to need Kevin Durant to to put you over the top. Well, and I, I look if they get contributions from Blake Griffin, if they get like Tyler Johnson, I think has emerged as a really good three point specialist for them. If they continue to get those kind of contributions, I think they're going to be just fine. What's going on in your watch? Eric is saying that our levels are once again on blast. Okay, cool, Eric. Appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> my point is, my point is that I think you're looking at a situation where you 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 have a ton of talent. Yeah, a ton of talent. Uh, in Brooklyn, and I, I, but none of that talent is going to overcome. Yeah, what's going on with Kevin Durant? Yeah, and I, and I think in the postseason too, like teams will find a way to exploit your weaknesses as a team because every team, even the Nets, have weaknesses. You know, um, you know, I would tell you the the weakness of the Nets is the fact that with Kevin Durant out, they don't really have, and this is why they signed Blake Griffin to mitigate this, but they ain't really got a, a legit seven footer on, right. on the squad and so right. yeah you know if you if you're playing teams that have a lot of length and they have a seven footer and they're you're dealing with that like that's going to be tougher for them but they're simply literally the brooklyn nets are just counting on the idea that they're going to play running gun basketball that they're simply just going to outscore but this you. is why the jared allen trade was such a big deal and why when yeah. you rely on a guy um uh oh my god the center for the the nets former clipper blake oh, griffin no the DeAndre Jordan, good lord! When you rely <laughs> on a guy like DeAndre Jordan, yeah. um, you, you're you're going to be limited because yeah. he can't play 35, 40 minutes a night. Right? That's not who he is. So I think when when the game's on the line, he's on the sideline. And Just I like think anybody other big, yeah. And that, and it becomes a game. The problem for the Nets, not to belabor the point of the Nets, the problem with the Nets is Kyrie Irving is selfish. Mm -hmm. And I understand we were taught we were watching the game together yesterday. And you made you, you were saying that that's what his role on this team is. I, I understand that. Yeah, that doesn't mean it's a good thing for them. Yeah, you have to give James Harden the opportunity to be an alpha dog on this team. Yeah, because you're better when he is. Yeah, and I think the only question, and I totally agree with that. I think one of the main questions that they face on a nightly basis is whose night is it going to be tonight? Like, because James Harden yeah. has no yeah. no issue 
racking up 15 assists with, you know, instead of having 40 points, he'll have 25 and 15. He has no problem doing that. And, and so I just think that, you know, he's looking at the, when he's bringing the ball up, he's like, all right, well, I got a, I got a pretty much a hall of famer in Kyrie Irving. I've got Joe Harris standing in the corner. Who's one of the best shooters the league has right now. Like I got options. So I think that the Nets are very fortunate that Harden is not upset by Kyrie's selfishness. Yeah, totally agree with you. What are we um, laughing at? Just that my 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 eBay is exploding <laughs> right now. Like I'm selling peep pancake sets like they ain't no tomorrow, man. Uh, anyway, anyway, yeah. Um, I, I if I said to you right now who's winning the NBA championship, I think I'd have you have to go, to go to the Nets. Nets yeah, right? you have to. You I have think that I think Suns and Nets is a real NBA Finals right now. I would love to see a book and uh, make a deep p- postseason run, but Wet, I like I think, a book. Dude, he's got to get past the Jazz. He has to get past the Jazz, and I don't know that that happens. Um, I think if you don't play DeAndre Ayton, they get past the Jazz. I think the way the Jazz are playing, it's all on Bogdanovich. I'm tell you, if Bogdanovich starts making threes again, mm-hmm. the Jazz will be fine. Yeah. If they replace Bogdanovich and make a trade by Thursday's deadline, the Jazz will be fine. They need Bogdanovich to do something other than nothing. Yeah. And they need Ursan Ilyasova to find a role on this team. Yeah, which is surprising to me. I mean, usually when you trade for a guy, you know what his role is going to be, but apparently not. 